Hi. So um, I'm going to be talking about uh, high tibial osteotomy the way that I do it. And really the question that comes up is uh, when cartilage has been worn out, can cartilage really regenerate because it's a specialized tissue? One of the best answers for that is Koshino's article in uh, 2003, where he's shown at a second look surgery when he was removing the implant, that areas which are completely bare of bone, as you can see here, are covered with uh, cartilage. Uh, that was the tibia. This is on the femur. And this really is uh, an article that people who need to be convinced about a high tibial osteotomy should read. Another uh, situation on the tibia where cartilage which is worn out is now uh, filled up. Now, this is not high line cartilage, but this is a high quality fibro cartilage. And that is something that is, I think, uh, important. So, here's an example. <laughs> this is a friend who did. An arthroscopy before the high tibial osteotomy and you can see bare femur fibrillated edges of the meniscus some cartilage again bare tibia and he did whatever you know meniscal trimming etc to be done and then did the osteotomy The lateral compartment, as is usually the case, was pristine. 11 months later, once this osteotomy had healed, he went and did a second arthroscopy uh, because the patient had come in for an osteotomy on the other side. Look at this uh, medial cartilage now. That entire bare area, without doing any uh, without doing any ACA, I mean, um, cartilage regenerative procedures, just unloading the medial side, uh, this has healed. And as I said, this is not high line cartilage, but this is a very high quality uh, fibro cartilage. So the question is, when do you classify it as varus? When it's something like this, where it's way on the medial side, it's obvious, you know, it's not difficult. But when you have some situations like this, where it is just on the medial side and you wonder, is it possible that the, the uh, symptoms are from such little virus? At such times, I think uh, MRI can help because on an MRI, you can see bone marrow edema, which is an indicator of uh, overload and injury. And also you can see extrusion of the medial meniscus. Extrusion of the medial meniscus has been shown to have significant correlation with chondral lesions. Also, when the alignment has been corrected and overloading has been corrected, the uh, bone marrow lesions uh, go away. So that's also been, been shown. How much to correct? This is pretty standard, I think. We talk of a hip, knee, ankle angle of 183 to 186, which means 3 to 6 degrees of valgus measured uh, three to six degrees of mechanical axis valgus. <coughs> and the second thing is to try and get the weight bearing axis passing through what's known as the Fujisawa point or basically the base of the lateral tibial spine. How to correct? There are multiple ways to correct it. But if you go by the principles of deformity correction, usually these axes <coughs> meet um, at the level of the upper end of the uh, fibula, tibio fibular joint. So if you keep a hinge on the medial side for a closing wedge and laterally on the lateral side for an opening wedge, you can do multiple ways of correction. So the probably the simplest, the oldest is the closing wedge uh, osteotomy. The advantage is that there is no bone graft required because you have cancellous bone uh, abutting against each other. Larger corrections are possible and less chances of union. You can also do an open wedge uh, correction, which was one of the first ways of doing an open wedge correction with a tricortical graft. 
And nowadays, uh, with fixation, you can do it with a conventional plate, you can do it with a pudu plate, or um, a locked osteotomy plate. Uh, Tomofix is one of the commonly used ones. There are now newer ones which are also uh, available. <clears throat> but the Tomofix uh, has been shown to be able to, uh, you know, not have problems with union, etc., because of this biplanar design of the osteotomy. And uh, you can do an acute opening wedge without a bone graft. So the way I prefer to do it, and I'll tell you why I prefer to do it, is using an orthofix type of monolateral fixator, where there are two pins in a transverse fashion in the proximal clamp. There is a self-aligning uh, module in this clamp. There is a distraction unit and two pins distally. So basically, <coughs> This osteotomy is below the puberosity. And just like with the AO method, there is an intact hinge on the lateral side. You have two pins going in from the medial face of the tibia and two pins uh, distally. So we don't have a biplanar like in the uh, AO. This is below the tuberosity. So when the osteotomy is opened out, it opens around this intact hinge which is at the level of the tip of the fibula. Now, here's a series of x-rays <coughs> of a patient who had a fixator. So, you can see there is joint space reduction. There is medial uh, subluxation of the uh, femur on the tibia. And as we start opening this out, the joint space opens. And unfortunately, this patient has distracted too much. With the fixator, the advantage is that you can dial in more or less uh, correction. So we were able to get this correction right down to the Fujisawa point and get a hip knee HKA angle of 184 degrees. And that's because with the fixator, we are able to uh, adjust this. That is the pre-op and post-op, nothing left inside, the tibia looks practically normal. So one of the questions is, why am I so stressed about trying to get it you know, perfect to a degree? There is some evidence which shows that better cartilage uh, regeneration is there with a better realignment. Koshino's original paper also showed that this is a more recent paper where they divided their patients into group A, uh, you know, three groups, A, B, and C. Uh, A had an angle post-correction uh, of zero degrees or less. That means straight or slight under correction. Group B was zero to six degrees. That is neutral to six degrees of valgus. And group C is over correction, more than six degrees of uh, valgus. So they found significant differences between cartilage regeneration and clinical outcomes and uh, significant uh, correlation between the regeneration and the clinical results in group B were better than in group A and group C. So finally, my message would be that, you know, we should be looking for virus alignment in early OA consider an early osteotomy, which will definitely delay a future TKR to a better age, if not avoid a TKR uh, altogether. Whatever particular method you want to use, try and be as accurate as you can in terms of planning and uh, also in terms of technique. Thank you.